Okay, this is my third video today. I'm just sitting around my bedroom here. The grandbabies did come over, but they went right to bed quickly. So I'm going to try to do a video briefly explaining an incident of uh, actually called street theater. It's a type of gang stalking that happens to people who are targeted individuals. And I'm coming to find out that I haven't been a targeted individual my whole life. And mostly I was clueless to it, and I'm figuring it out. Oh, that's what all that weird stuff that's happened to me my whole life was. Hmm, people messing with me. I tend to over-explain things too much. If you don't believe in targeted individuals or whatever, or you don't even know what it is, Google it and look it up and decide for yourself. I know I'm not a liar. And I know I'm not imagining things. And um, this is an incident that happened uh, last year. About a year ago, my brother first came to live with me last August, and I was in Florida. And I got home a month after he was here. He got settled in. And then basically that first week I was here, I was so targeted, like, intensely. Everywhere I went, people were looking at me, doing things, making weird comments, bizarre things kept happening out in public. Too much to be a coincidence. And um, this one thing was all day long, all night long that day. We were out and about driving the car, and I was driving because he didn't have his license yet, and he's not used to being a passenger, and it's very hard for him. So he was all stressed out. You could tell because he's a controlling kind of person, and he did not like I don't know if it hurt his pride or what, but it was just hard for him. To me, it seemed like it was hard for him, that he was uncomfortable that I was driving. I'm not the best driver in the world, but I'm not the worst either. I had $35 a month car insurance, you know, back when I had my car. <sighs> I taught six kids how to drive. And my car insurance still stayed low. They're all very good drivers. My one daughter had one little fender bender once. When there was an ambulance and fire engine and the police, whatever, and inching, 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 she tapped somebody's car. That's not being a bad driver. And I've had a lot of emotional problems over the years, and even in a state of being emotional over the years, over my 50 years of living, so my 30 years of driving, 34, 32 years of driving, even in an emotional state, I did not have a wreck. I pray, pray, pray a lot when I drive, but... Um, and if I did something like made a mistake and cut somebody off, I would say, oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, sorry, my bad. I don't have a problem with that. But this day, my brother and I were running some errands. We talked about what we were doing and uh, said I was going to PetSmart to try to get this deworming medicine for my cats. I've been out of town several months and I wanted to make sure they got flea treatment, worm treatment, got their food, and we were going to go to Home Depot and Look at maybe getting some two by fours or something to start working in the garden or build a chicken coop. I don't remember. We were just starting our projects. So this day, there was already a whole bunch of other incidents riding bikes and stuff. But I'm talking about this one day. I would borrowed my son's car on a Saturday and he said we could run errands with it. Very nice. He slept in late. We took the car in the morning. And I'm driving down Chesapeake Boulevard, I get to Little Creek Road, and the intersection, I mean, this isn't accurate at all, because there's different different amounts of lanes coming down Chesapeake Boulevard and turning onto Little Creek Road, which would then go to Military Highway, if you know it. So there's two lanes, and then the turn lanes, whatever. I wasn't very accurate, but my thing is explaining how the street theater happened. And we were parked at a red light at the turn lanes, and when it was red, green hours for the turn lanes, we proceeded to go. And these three cars were involved. I labeled them one, two, and three. I guess I'm three. So, manipulation and control intimidation is really witchcraft.
and this mental pressure and trying to trick someone and fool them and try to make things look like something they're not. It's actually witchcraft and there's spirits involved in that. Uh, yeah, rebellions, witchcraft, uh, manipulation and control is it, a witchcraft thing. I keep getting notifications on my Facebook, but um, so all I did was turn and I stayed in my lane and I continued turning. And what happened was the car that was in front of me, this car, let's see. So I'm here. Oh, oh, I'm going this way. So I pull out and this car pulls out and we pull out and curve and it would be normal to just stay in your lane and go. And these cars turned and went. Well, what the trick was, the car in front of me went to turn, but then they did this weird little juke, and they cut this way, and even the air looked weird, and they cut across the the cars that were sitting here waiting at their light, because they had red, and we had turned, and he got like that, and I just went really slowly and stayed in my normal trajectory, and I waited for him to stop doing his weird thing, and then he pulled back up and went, and he kept going, and then I kept going, but as this was happening, this person was looking at me, giving a mean face and acting like I was doing something weird when they weren't and they went and then this car which first one car went and then the second car went and they did this honking their horn waving their hand kind of thing acting like I was cutting them off when I stayed in my lane and I turned I just waited for this car to juke over here and then cut across the front and they didn't just turn normally they went up here and over and then went and I just went slowly and waited a little for them to finish and I kept going and then this guy stepped on his gas and sped off really fast and honked his horn I was like Arr! and so as we're driving down here now past the way I'm shaken I'm very shaken because first there's this weird feeling of what is going on this car in front of me is like turning sideways and creeped up right I don't even know how he maneuvered his car like that instead of just turning he kind of cut over and cut straight across those cars and then cut back in front of me and I'm just going in my normal curve around and this car over here passed by and then the next one was like honk like I was in his way so that car acted like out there was the normal space and where I was was too far left and this guy on the left on the turn acted like I and my brother's like what are you doing and he starts yelling at me while I'm driving and I'm going down military highway being very calm but I was shaken like what the heck was that oh, this is just tickling me tickling my neck and so uh he's like you cut that guy off I said no I didn't I turned and I stayed in my line and this is like the theme of the day I just kept saying I didn't do anything wrong this is longer than I thought Thought it would curl up and stay short and not bother me. I didn't do anything wrong. I just turned slowly in my arc and the other guy turned. This person did some weird thing and I just slowed down for them and this guy's acting like I'm cutting him off in his lane and speeding off just because somebody speeds off, honks their horn and pounds their fists and doesn't mean I did anything wrong. They're just acting like a bunch of weirdos. But my brother completely fell for it and was like, what are you doing? You cut that guy off! <sighs> like, I gotta sit here and let you drive and look what you're doing. Oh, and I'm just like, the world is insane. What, the, what is going on? I didn't even realize it was street theater till like later in the day. So, I'm driving down Military Highway and I'm still shaking, but I pull over by the 7 Eleven, which is by the Pet Smart. But I didn't turn right in because we were going to go to Home Depot. So I go up to the light and I turn in there. And I say, no, let's go to Home Depot next. Go to PetSmart first and get the more medicine. So I turn down the feeder road between all the parking lots. And I go down to go to the back of the parking lot at PetSmart. And you probably can't even tell anything from this. But say the store is down here. And there's a bunch of parked cars and parked cars, right? I'm up here. And I'm coming down the feeder road between all the parking lots of the stores, and I go to turn, and I have the right of way. And the 7-Eleven's up here. I had passed by the 7-Eleven and then turned in and came over. This guy comes out of the 7-Eleven parking lot and cuts over like, I have the right of way because I'm in the street, and he's jumping out of the parking lot, cutting across me, and he slams on his brakes and jerks, and he's like a big truck and a big guy, and he's all mad, honks his horn, and slams on the brake, but then speeds by me and cuts me off, and I'm just... Thank God I have the Holy Spirit, and I have been set free of a lot, and I don't have flesh to rise up and be, like, getting mad at people. I just stayed calm, but I was shaken, because it's a shock. 
I just ate calm and drove slowly, thinking, wow, that was weird. The guy jumped out and acted like I was cutting him off, continued turning into the parking lot. Then I drive down the row of cars, and there's parked up on one side by the store, and there's a spot. So I come down slowly, and I go to turn into the spot. Somebody comes up here and does the exact same thing. Turns the corner really fast and speeds right at me, then slams on their brakes and goes, oh. And it's a woman, and she hits her steering wheel and raises her hands up and goes, oh. Like, I'm the worst driver in the world, and I just, I was already here, slowed down, not even hardly moving, just starting to turn into a space, and she speeds around here and comes up here, slams on her brakes, and then has to turn and then go around me, and I just continue to park, and I just sit there, and I just sit there shaking, and my brother's going, what are you doing? Like, from that other guy, and this guy, and this is three times in a row now, and I'm just shaking, but I'm saying, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I just said it a couple times. Turn off the car. We get out. We go in pet smart. And he's just like. <sighs> Frustrated. He can't be driving. And I have to drive. And look what a horrible driver I am. And we almost wrecked three times. And He's not saying that. But you know that's what he's thinking. And that's the intention of this street theater. Those three people on purpose. For whatever reason. Did that to me. I don't know if they're in a little club. I don't know if they're getting paid. I don't know what the F is going on, but I understand it was me who was common denominator in all three incidents, but I was driving normally and slowly, and these people just drove around me very erratically and then made mean faces at me and honked their horns and threw their hands in the air and acted like I was doing something wrong, and I wasn't. So I am shaken, because that shakes you up. But I had the presence of mind and in my heart, no, I didn't do anything wrong. Go in the store, and we're looking up the shelf, the shelf, the shelf. Okay, where's the pet stuff? Where's the pet stuff? And already there's weird stuff with my brother just doing anything at all. He has to be in control, and he has to, where are you standing, and where am I standing? Look at what I'm looking at, and not what you're looking at. So whatever, I'm following him. I don't even know. We go look at the cat aisle. I don't see anything there. He goes to find an employee to ask them. I find the shelf. It's empty. The thing that has the pet tabs of the cat dewormer that I want, the entire shelf is empty. Kind of seems to me like somebody went ahead of me and took them all off the shelf. He comes back and says, well, this lady's going to help us look. I said, no, I already looked. They're not there. Well, she's going to look. I said, no, uh, I'm, I'm good. Let's just go. He's like, oh, okay. Because I kind of felt like there was going to be more funny business of just dragging me around and it's still going to be nothing. I was like, fine. The shelf's empty. It's not there. Fine. Let's go. So we leave. Just cut that short. And we go to Home Depot, which is right next door. And walking through Home Depot, we're at the paint place, and uh, somebody comes by to ask us about the paint we want or something. And then they stop at the counter, they put their hand on the counter, and they look at me, and they go, Are you okay? They're asking me about if I want the paint or not, but they're acting like I just lost my dog, and they're asking if I'm alright. It's like they knew what just happened to me, and they knew I was shaken up, and I was just standing there being a normal person. It's this thing they play with the street theater where... There's, like, good cop, bad cop. Somebody out there will be really nice to you, and then somebody will be really mean to you. And they throw you off balance, and then they act like they care, and they get your... Tr it's psycho. There is this stuff is really going on in the world. There are targeted individuals that they mess with your head, and they just want to drive you crazy. And I forget what else happened that day. If that was like the day we went to the lighting section and all, you know, we were looking at the outdoor lamps and they're all mounted on a whole wall of different light fixtures you can get for your bathroom or for your back porch or just lighting fixtures for your ceiling, but they're stuck on the wall and all the displays there. And all of a sudden they all start going on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off. And then another guy comes by and looks at me like, hey, everybody looks at you like they know something, like they knows. I'm not imagining this. You know, somebody comes up to you and they're looking at you like, Trying to see if you know what's going on. and They're just playing it, trying to play head games with you. Why? I don't know. I mean, why specifically? I don't know. I could make a lot of guesses. So that happened, and that's what street theater is. Where for some reason you're targeted, and they make up scenarios that make you look crazy, and you're not. Then later that night, because we had my son's car... We drove to the Sam's Club in Chesapeake, I think. 
because we were going to pick him up at his girlfriend's house, but we wanted some groceries. So we went there and bought a bunch of groceries, and then we drove to his girlfriend's house and picked him up because she got him and took him around to do stuff that Saturday because we had his car. So we were picking him up to bring him home. But on the way to go there, maybe just we were going to pick him up. Maybe Sam's Club was a different day. We're driving down Tidewater Drive, and the tunnel's blocked off down Tidewater right at the base. And there's trucks blocking the road. There's flashing lights. There's flags. There's all these people. And I'm just thinking, oh, my gosh, this is another setup just to screw with me. But, you know, it makes you think that. And then you think everything's uh, whatever it was, just, you know, a lot of things happening in that day, but I stayed calm. We had to turn left and take a detour, and I just kept praying and kept calm, and we had to go and around another way, and I think he was looking at my phone and looking at a map and trying to figure out how to get there, and we went through a little bridge tunnel to a, a little island part, and then another bridge tunnel and over, so if people know downtown Norfolk, they know. We got there okay, no problem, but also as I turned left and was going, I think somebody was tailgating me and then somebody in a lane was like really close to me and then cut off and ran and I just drove real oh I was driving slowly and he's like what are you doing and he didn't know the different cars that were around me playing games I'm just driving slow and steady I'm not gonna speed up I'm not gonna be erratic I'm not gonna change lanes quickly he's like go what are you doing and I'm like I'm just driving and I'm being safe and I drove in different people in different color I think there were white and red cars drove around me a little bit strangely changed lanes passed tailgated slowed down cut me off and then slowed down like a bunch of weird stuff and i just drove through the bridges and got my son and came home that was some day boy all right i'll talk about the other stuff well it's 16 minutes i maybe i could do a whole half hour on this one that street theater with cars where they try to make you crazy and thank god i have self-control and I didn't let it get to me, but it can make you really shaky. The first few weeks he was home, we rode our bikes a lot, and some of it was really fun. The first day I wanted to ride bikes, it was like a light, misty rain. I was like, I just wanted to run to the store and get some milk and bread or a treat or whatever and come home. You want to still ride even though it's raining? And he's a good brother like that. Like, it's so hard to say about the abuse because some things he's still like a little kid, and, and we just really enjoyed ourselves riding our bikes sometimes. We ran to the store and came back, and that was nice. And another time when, when I was first home. But then another time we were going to ride up to the beach and go to the post office to mail something and the grocery store there and just riding around town to show him the town. And anywhere we went, he was so overly critical of my um, bike riding. Well, why? Let's go this way and let's go that. And he was behind me, but I was in front. He's like, you go first. He kept telling me to go first because that was polite or something. But then he would criticize everywhere I would go. So it was making me really nervous. And I just I was trying to be considerate. And then, oh, the traffic's clear, so I'm going to go across. Why'd you go across then? And why are you going here? And why are you going there? And why are you going in this parking lot? I was like, oh, my gosh. And then driving home down Granby, there's a bike lane. The right lane is bike lane. There's a giant signs written on the street. Bike lane. I'm like, you can ride next to me. You can just take the whole lane. And he's like, no, I don't trust people driving around us. So he's driving behind me. But I'm trying to drive on the shoulder. But there's all these pine cones. So I pull out some and then go in some. And he's like, why are you pulling out? Why are you? I'm, I'm telling you, everything I did, he was criticizing. Everything I did. And he's saying, well, maybe we could go for Chinese. Or is there a buffet? And I said, we could ride down to Ward's Corner. But by the time we hit Bayview, my nerves were so bad from him criticizing Every single move I did on this bicycle, I was like, I'm just going to go home. The light cleared. All the lanes were stopped. All the time. I just cut through the intersection, turned left, and went home. And he's like, what are you doing? You're driving so erratically. <gasps> and I'm like, I just want to go home. I just rode my bike and went home and went home. And I think it was um, that morning we'd come out of our house. And there were no less than 25 red cars parked in front of my house, down the street, in the neighbor's driveways, everywhere. I said, look at this. This is code talking that I'm telling you about. I just learned about a couple years ago. There's 25 cars out here. That means you're, red means hot. It either means they're listening to you or they're warning you that there's danger or you're in trouble or you better not do something. And I'd been saying I wanted to make a video about my life and some of the abuses I had remembered in the last two years. And now that he was out of prison and safe, I wanted to do that because I want to tell the truth about my life and help other people who this may have happened to, stuff that happened to me in my childhood in my hometown. 
And he's like, I don't know. I wouldn't do that. They, you know, they'll come after you. You won't be safe. I'm like, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. God's going to keep me safe and protect me. And then we opened the door that morning. I was like, look at this. Can't be a coincidence. 25 red cars in your in this tiny little neighborhood. That's not a mistake. Somebody did that on purpose. And then that day I'm riding bikes with him and other things that had happened with him where I realized he's not the person I thought he was. I'm like I was starting to have a nervous breakdown because I was like, oh my gosh, what is this situation I'm in now? And my nerves just couldn't take it. So I got home from that bike ride and I just sat in the front yard and I was, I was just crying uncontrollably. My nerves were shot. And he's coming in out of the house going, um, you know, I don't know what to do. I was going to make dinner, but now you're acting like this. So, and I was just like, I'm uh, crying my eyes out in the front lawn, sitting in a chair and he's at the back door. And I'm saying, look, I'm just, whatever, just know I'm not angry with you. I'm just upset and I, I can't talk about it. It's like, okay. And later that night I finally came inside and stopped crying and he sat and watched TV with me and tried to be nice to me, I guess. And I thought that was really nice, but... I don't think he really understands to care about you for real I think he just wanted me to calm down so I would be a normal person and not psycho but I, I texted somebody I know and said look I can't take this BS I, I really can't take it y'all gotta cut this out And I had attacks in the night of uh, electronic. My legs felt restless constantly, buzzing and buzzing and buzzing in my head, and uh, not being able to sleep. And I prayed against it, and I prayed against it before, and it stopped, and I didn't have authority, and it wasn't working. And I thought, well, maybe Jesus doesn't want me to tell me my story right then, so. I did it, and I talked with my brother about it, and I said, I guess I won't make it public, so I made a video and sent it to someone anonymously, and they told my story. At least I got it out that way, but I think I'm going to go public if I get support. Maybe Donald Trump will be president, and uh, we'll start standing up for victims of targeted individual abuse. I don't know that I could say much more in this video. That's about it. This happens to other people. I know I'm not the only one. It's very insidious. And it's very real. Okay, bye.